everybody, Kenny with Ugly Tent, and it's good to be back. So about a month ago, I spent a week in a mountain village in Honduras. And it was uh, it was everything I hoped it would be. It's taken me a while to get the footage transferred over to the laptop. I have an hour and 45 minutes worth of footage, and for some reason, it wouldn't go normally like it has in the past with a cable. I had to airdrop everything. Long story short. So I haven't been able to get the video together. When I got back from Honduras, I went to the um, Survival and Preparedness Expo in Knott County, Kentucky with Jake from Buckeye Bushcraft and Sean Kelly from Corporal's Corner and uh, got to meet Creek Stewart. So I spent the weekend there doing that. And then um, I had search and rescue recertification last weekend. So it's been a busy month or so and I've been trying to get back to you guys. It's just been so crazy. But I wanted to share some things with you about the Honduras trip. I'm going to make a full-length video or a, a full-length film of the the trip so you can watch it in its entirety if you want. It's going to be a, a long one, but it's going to be really good. It was an awesome experience and there's some really great uh, footage and stories there that I'd like for you to watch and like to share with you. But I'll give you some of the highlights in case you don't want to watch the full length. I'll share some clips um, about the about the trip to Honduras. When you get there, you know it's a third world country. We left the airport and we drove an hour and a half to get to the the mission where we're staying. The mission is in the village, so you're immersed in the culture. And we're talking driving an hour on dirt roads and uh, straight up uh, straight up the mountain. I mean, the the mission itself sits on the mountain, overlooks the the valley, it's beautiful, beautiful scenery. The mornings were beautiful, the nights were beautiful, the daytime was just stifling hot, uh, and with the dust in my lungs, it was a tough trip. I'll be honest, it was physically demanding for me. Uh, I, I loved going and I'm glad I did what I did, and it was everything I wanted it to be, but it was very, very tough, and it's taken me a while to recover from that physically because of my lungs, but uh, I wouldn't take it back. I'm glad I went. Anyway, so we're living in the village, and we're, we're helping the village with the mission. You know, uh, the, the Casa de Charlie is the mission there that actually helps provide support for the villagers. Um, I think there's about 300 people in the village. I uh, could be wrong, but I remember hearing that. Um, but there's a lot of widows, a lot of single moms. The, the men leave the village to go find work and never come back. Uh, it's a very sad place, uh, but the people are very happy. The people are, are healthy and happy, but it is true survival. They live day to day. Um, now, obviously, in the mission where the mission where we stayed, it was a nice facility, but you're still, you know, six days without the normal creature comforts. You know, um, water was sketchy, uh, and, but we helped fix a well. They had dug a well three months prior, and we were the ones to. Our team was the ones to actually get it running. You know, they hadn't been able to get water from the well. It's a long story, but so that's the first well in the village in uh, well ever. Uh, there's one that was dug 50 years ago over the hill, probably 25, 30 minutes away, or over the mountain. You know, I'd drive down the mountain to get to it. So that was a big deal for the village for the mission. Um, when we got there, we only had I think two days of water left and we were there for six days so it was going to be going down to that well or going down to the river which was really sketchy to get water to be purified I know they used it for the showers and the, and the toilets and stuff like that but the well made the big difference and also by uh, getting the well up it, it gave us an opportunity to fix their block machine and we got them making block again for anything in the village, any, any places or any houses in the village that were needing to uh, repair their house, add to a house or build a house um, for a new family or whatever, they could make their own cement block there. And it also put about four people back to work. So it was a good thing. So the trip was awesome. We did that. We did. Uh, went to the schools, visited the schools where we help out. We personally uh, refinished and refurbished some old school desks and chairs and brought it to them. I wrote scriptures on the back of the chairs so that the kids, and I wrote it in Spanish, each scripture encouraged the child. You know, it was, it was, um, 
encouragement for the children. We also gave food to the widows. So every month or a couple months, they uh, gather food bags to take to the widows because in that village, and my understanding is in Honduras, if you're a widow, no one takes care of you. The, you know, most of the families don't take care of them if they have families there. The government doesn't take care of them. Widows are almost like left out. It's really sad. So the mission and the director of the mission, my friend Ed, uh, his heart is for helping the widows. So we took food bags, grocery sacks of food, staples, like uh, uh, rice and beans and uh, laundry soap, and uh, this bags that they've been putting together for a long time and supplying them to the widows so they will have stuff. It's really sad that what they live on. You know, they only live on uh, the, I believe it's the, like a universal basic income, 500 lempiras a year, which is about 20 bucks uh, in American dollars per year per person. So, I mean, they're just, they grow their own food, what they can, you know, with the climate, it's hard to grow. Um, they do their, uh, do their best they can with what they have and uh, they're happy people. It was very eye-opening and life-changing for me, which I expected that, and you know that's what I wanted to see how these third world countries really live and see how the culture is. And not the tourist traps. I'm talking about living in the village and, and staying with them and being around them and walking with them and visiting and getting to know them. <clears throat> the last day we went to an ancient waterfall that's been there since I think he said a thousand BC. Uh, they haven't changed it. They've added touristy stuff to it, but they really haven't changed. It's called pull up a sock. I know it sounds like pull up a sock. That's how I remembered it. But it, I'm, I'm probably not pronouncing it uh, correctly, but that's the best way I know how to pronounce it. But it was a waterfall. It was beautiful. Uh, I just took pictures and walked around. I didn't do anything that most of the guys did. There was a zip line that went across the waterfall, and there was some, some, some swimming down at the bottom of the falls, and um, stuff like that. Well, I, I didn't participate in that. I just hung out and, and watched the fellas and took pictures and video. So but it, was an, it was amazing to see that waterfall. It was just absolutely breathtaking. So that's the Honduras trip in a nutshell. I, like I said, I will share the entire video eventually once I get it edited and get it up there. Um, I've still got a lot going on these next couple of weeks, which I'm always excited about. I love my adventures. But I want you guys to see this full-length film. It's going to be pretty neat to see this country and, and what we did there. So thanks for watching another episode of Ugly Tent. I always appreciate you guys, the love and support, and we'll see you on the next video.